Up to this point, we focused primarily on covalent compounds that act as acids or bases. However, ionic compounds can also behave as acids or bases in aqueous solution. As you know, most ionic compounds dissolve readily in water. That is, they dissociate into their constituent cations and anions. These ions may simply float around in the water, doing nothing much. These are called spectator ions. They don't react with anything as either acids or bases, so don't impact the H3O plus concentration or the pH. Cations that fall into this category are those of the metals from the first two columns of the periodic table the alkali and alkaline earth metal cations. The anions that don't impact the pH of a solution are the conjugate bases of the very strong acids. So Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, NO3 minus, HSO4 minus, and ClO4 minus. Pretty much every other ion reacts with water. We say it hydrolyzes and so has an impact on the pH of a solution. Other anions, those that are not the six conjugate bases of the strong acids, react as weak bases with water, and therefore increase the pH of a solution. The extent to which they react with water is governed by their Kb value and their base strength. To determine just how they impact the pH of a solution, we would use an ice table. With the exception of the spectator ions we mentioned before, cations are Lewis acids, and they lower the pH of a solution. Some cations, such as ammonium ions, R3NH+, act as Bronsted-Lowry acids. We treat them as we would any other weak Bronsted acid, using ice tables and their Ka values. Other cations especially metal cations from the transition metals and P block, don't have hydrogens to donate to anything, so they can't behave in the familiar Bronsted-Lowry fashion. Instead, they initially react as Lewis acids with water. Water molecules can donate a lone pair to a metal cation, forming a covalent bond. In this way, they form complex ions with water. Anywhere from one to six, and sometimes even more, water molecules can be associated with a particular metal cation. Once water is bound to a metal ion in this way, the protons of the associated water molecule become more acidic than those of regular water. So the complex ion can act as a Bronsted-Lowry acid. The complex ion can react with water, just like any other Bronsted acid, making the ions conjugate base and H3O+, thereby lowering the pH. To determine how the dissolution of a particular salt might impact pH, first, draw the structures of the two ions. If either of the ions are spectators, simply ignore them they don't impact the pH of a solution. If one of the ions is a spectator and the other is a weak acid or weak base, then simply treat the solution as if it's a weak acid or weak base solution, ice tables and so forth. If both the cation and anion can impact the pH, the situation gets a little trickier. We need to compare the strengths of the cation as an acid it's Ka, with the strength of the anion as a base, it's Kb. If the Ka of the acid is larger than the Kb of the base, then the acid wins out, and the solution has a slightly acidic pH. If the Ka of the acid is smaller than the Kb of the base, then the base wins out, and the solution is slightly basic. If the Ka and Kb values are close to each other, then the solution is near neutral. 